Look, engineering wise, do you believe what Musk, Elon Musk describes is possible? Are you convinced? Well, I think everybody's looking at the acronym and I think I'd go with a bit far-fetched rocket at this <laughs> point. But don't get me wrong. Uh, number one, in order to fly a rocket ship like astronauts do, you have to be an optimist. And also uh, SpaceX has been far-fetched from the beginning and yet they've delivered over and over again. They're, they're an amazingly progressive company for some of the reasons that you mentioned in that, uh, that opening special there. So, so I don't think it'll happen along the timeline that Elon was talking about today, but uh, he has amazing capacity and some brilliant people working for him. And I, I think it's a great outlandish goal to set for everyone right now. Right, great goal. Now look, you did basically, you sat in the space shuttle, you sat on top of a rocket more or less as you go up to the, the International Space Station. Sitting on one as it comes down to land, would you feel comfortable doing that. He's had like 16 in a row now, Falcon 9 rockets that have come down and landed successfully. Would you, would you sit in one? Well, even the most simple airplane in the world that, that takes a passenger has to have an extremely trained pilot. And for any type of long range flight, you have to have at least two pilots. Otherwise, nobody will buy a ticket. And no one is getting on even the most primitive airplane that has a robot sitting up front. So uh, I think uh, ticket sales are going to be very difficult, and especially because um, this can't glide to a landing. It's a very complex design. It's going to have to be pretty exquisitely proven, I think, before it yeah. becomes a viable business model. But uh, he, he's moving forward incredibly fast, and I think this is a real worthy target to put up on the but wall for people to aim for. One of the great obstacles is it can't just be 99.9% .9 safe. I mean, that would, be, that would be safer than the space shuttle. But it's got to be 99.9 .9 to I don't know how many decimal places, really, doesn't it? And shown to be such before you can really market that for anything other than cargo. I, I think also the difference is, um, imagine if you were getting into an airplane with hundreds of other people with no windows and um, pretty questionable uh, basic human facilities. How, where's your food going to come from? How do you take care of your waste? All of, um, and you're going to be weightless for the majority of all of these voyages. There's a, a real lot of just straight human factors complexity that is going to roll into it. So, uh, but you got to start somewhere. Yeah. And and Elon is out in front of the pack. Right. So I, I'm, I don't want to belittle anything. No, no, you're but, not. Uh, but it's harder than it seems. You're not sounding negative. But look, what about what's it all for? Because he has this vision of going to Mars. He's spoken of making life multiplanetary to extend the kind of the chances of human beings surviving. Is, is Mars really that interesting? I mean, it doesn't seem like there's that much up there, really, once you get there. Well, I think similar um, questions were asked about Canada <laughs> not that long ago. Just a, an endless expanse of snow and ice. So um, often the things we discover when we get somewhere tend to make it slightly more interesting than it seems from, from an unfocused far distance. But I think what Elon also recognizes is there are moments in history where things come together. We would never have put people on the moon if it hadn't been the combination of the Cold War, of a populist president, and then the president being shot. If those things hadn't all happened, I don't think the United States would have sustained the inertia and impetus to actually put Neil and Buzz on the moon in 69. And I think Elon also sees that sort of moment in time when the technology and the, um, the economy sort of make this possible. Right. And he recognizes that his company is in a position to do that. So I think that gives him partially a sense of urgency. But that's also. something, what you're saying is really interesting, because if you really looked at it, and those who really have the resources, I mean, he's got billions and he's got shareholders, the, the, the place that really has resources and the will and the desire to show itself as, you know, lifting off is China or potentially India as well. These, these guys must be able to beat Elon Musk with his 10 or 15 billion or something, mustn't they? Well, both India and China have very active space agencies. Uh, China has put people into space, one of only three nations in the world that can. India is working really hard to be able to do that. Both India and China are targeting putting people on the moon. So they're definitely heading that way. Um, but it's, it's sometimes to the brave, you know, goes the victory. Yeah. And 
And uh, this is definitely, um, whether it's, it's spoken or not, it's definitely a competition. In Elon's case, it's also a financial competition because throughout all of this, not only has he pushed back the edge of the technology, he's continued to make a profit at it. And, and that's pretty rare. Yeah, well, I mean, look, that gets us to the next, the, I suppose the final question. Is there a business plan? Is there a business plan that can work and that can justify this? Hey, it's going to be great if he can achieve it, but is it going to really pay? Can it really pay to be sending, building lots of these things? Um, reusable rockets, especially to the extent that, uh, that Elon is reusing them, way more than the space shuttle ever did, that reusability drops the cost significantly. And he's getting better at it with every launch. I think his idea of being able to go from place to place on the surface of the Earth with an essentially reusable rocket does start to become viable from a business model. It's gonna be a long time before transport to the moon or transport to Mars becomes viable for a business. But uh, if someone has a few billion dollars to spend of their own, they can also just uh, afford to take the risk and put it up there and build it and see if people will come or not. And uh, that may be what Elon does also. That, that's what he's about. Uh, Commander Hadfield, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. Thanks, Adam.